Recently, I've been asking myself the question: Can Russia still win after two and a half years? Yesterday, I wrote a blog, and of course,、uh, I published it only today.、Um, I want to read and make a little bit of comment on this blog. I think it summarizes my views、uh, quite well. So the background of this is that、uh, at the beginning of the Russo-Ukrainian war, most military experts and commentators thought that the Russian army would surely crash the Ukrainian army in no time,、uh, if not in weeks or months, certainly within a year. But uh, uh, and I believe that the Russian leadership. Vladimir Putin, in particular, thought so too. Or else, it would really be mad to actually start this this war and deteriorate every aspect of their country: economic,、uh, international relations, military, and even in terms of prestige, as well as the personal fortunes of those leaders、uh, in a forever war. But、uh, after two and a half years, Russia appears to be looking at a broad strategic defeat. So that is completely contrary to mo- how most people envisaged this war to have taken place. So the question that、uh, I think a lot of more independent-minded people may be asking is this: Can Russia still win at this point? Now, before attempting to answer this question, I think it's important to establish what I mean by broad strategic defense、uh, defeat. Russo files, and we know the usual suspects, they will magnify the battlefield near Pokrovsk,、uh, Pokrovsk, and they say that、uh, the Russians are making good advances in that region, and in fact. They are accelerating the their advances, so they are making they they do doing quite well, and they are going to crush the Ukrainian army, and that's the fi- that is the final line, final defense line. After that line, there will be Russian steam lo- steamroller and blah blah blah. We've heard it、uh, more too many t- I think one time tw- too many, right? I understand that they are enthusiastic about Russians' victories, but. Uh, on average, the Russians push around 120 to 180 meters per day during two and a half years. That is hardly a steamroller, and that is not really,、uh, really winning. That's not really winning. And even if they take、uh, Pokrovsk, which is still a question, there will be another line, and then another line, because. They it would take them so so long to take a small town that the Ukrainians will always have time to dig in behind、uh, that line. So there will be one line, another line, and that is hardly making big、uh, strategic victory. And uh, uh, I, I I mentioned in this block that it is very far from cutting the Ukrainians to the west of the Dnieper River. And still further from、uh, really unseating the Ukrainian commands, their government. If they keep the current pace, it would take them another decade or two, with millions more killed in action, to achieve some 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 semblance of military victory. Now,、uh, but but if they manage to annex some parts of Ukraine, that will only be the start of a more occupying phase. Just to remind everyone, when we say that the Americans suffer defeat from, uh, uh, from uh, they are suffering defeat、uh, in Iraq and they suffered defeat in Afghanistan, we are saying that they suffered defeat. They def- they were defeated when occupying, acting as oc- occupying、uh, occupying forces. Now Russia is still in the conquering stage. It would take them years more at this pace to conquer p- some parts of Ukraine, and then there comes occupation. In in comparison, it took the Americans just less than two months to conquer Iraq, and they still cannot win. 
And so this is a forever war that it does not seem like Russia can win. And what I mean by strategic def defeat, broad strategic defeat, comprises seven aspects. One, it is Russia is being encircled by NATO. And uh, this includes Ukraine, which actually is one of the main forces right now of NATO. You can say that it is not a member, it is not a recognized official member of NATO, but that's immaterial. Two, uh, the collective security treaty organization is crumbling. And this is uh, really at uh, Russia's own fault because CSTO did not go out to uh, def help defend uh, Armenia, right? Because the the Russians were thinking uh, positioning themselves uh, to to get some favors from Turkey I think so they sacrificed their allies and their allies turn uh, turn against them number 3 uh, Russia is suffering deteriorating economic conditions. R right now, the inflation is getting really high. In the beginning, they withstood Western sanctions quite well, and I think they could withstand Russian sanctions. But that is not counting uh, the uh, uh, the consumption of war, right? Because the drains from war, because nothing drains wealth like like war, and. Uh, Let's not keep going to the bullshit about they're getting richer, that their economy is booming. Uh, no, their GDP may be higher nominally, but uh, that is all going to this war. And uh, if you are making 100, let's say you, you make 100, but you spend 500, most of it in the war, then you are getting poorer, right? In the past, maybe you are making 50, and uh, but you only spend 40 so every every year you save 10 that's a good year right now you you're making let's say you make 100 but you spend 500 because you're having a forever war then it drains your it drains your wealth you get poorer and the country gets destroyed nothing destroys a country like war and forever wars have unraveled uh, numerous empires in history, and empires much more dominant than the Russians. Number four, uh, we know that Russia has, is suffering uh, a lot of, uh, um, how to say, wear and tear, or losses, heavy losses on the front lines in, ter in terms of material. And they're spending a lot of shells and bombs and... Uh, uh, and uh, missiles, they even have to import, uh, like they, there were numbers of six million or even more shells from North Korea, uh, also all sorts of uh, historic weapons uh, that were from World War II are being pulled out. This is simply because a lot of the weapons are now being used and destroyed. This is just normal in a war. But uh, this, it's really already being uh, depleted. We see that the Russians are now using motorcycles to charge at the Ukrainian positions. That, of course, entails heavy uh, personnel losses. But uh, uh, if, they are, if they no longer have enough armored vehicles, that's what they have to do, deal with. And, of course, that means that uh, fight, keep on fighting this war becomes harder and harder. Number five, there's international isolation. This point is quite obvious. Number six, Russian-made weapons are proven to underperform their NATO counterparts. Of course, the Russophiles who say that the Russians have the best weapons in the world, everyone should buy from them. But the reality does not seem to reflect that because, uh, you see, uh, we know that Ukraine is a much smaller country. It's a much poorer country. And... Uh, like the Russophiles say, the West have not provided full-throated support uh, for Ukraine. They've given them only old weaponry, uh, weapons in stock, you old ones, some even expired. But still, that seems to be enough to stop the Russian advances, mostly, for the most part. Yes, Russians are advancing near Pokrovsk. 
but that is only one single protrusion and that is that can be actually surrounded you, we know from world war ii that the russians ch charged against the wehrmacht a, a lot a lot of times and uh, they suffered a lot of losses in those uh, reckless charges so we don't know but even if they take pokrovsk even if they take the entirety of donetsk uh, the russian made weapons have been proven to underperform even uh, because the, the Ukrainians being a much weaker country using old NATO gear is enough to have a good fight against the Russians. So that really is not, it's not a good thing for the Russians, right? And number seven, there is really a broad reassessment of military, uh, Russian military power and uh, its allies from nato nato uh, members but also russians allies are reassessing their geopolitical standing the russians allies are being less aggressive and the russians enemies are being more vocal and uh, they are become they, a lot of them are remilitarizing uh, japan uh, germany they are remilitarizing and uh, that means that Russia's uh, uh, military environment uh, will be even worse. So that is what I mean by a broad strategic defend, defeat, right? They could be, uh, win a tactical victory here and there, but that does not really make much of a differ uh, difference. Even if they occupy some parts of Ukraine, if they cannot hold it, if their economy crumbles over time, they will have to give back that uh, uh, those areas and perhaps um, certainly with interest. But I think uh, at this point, uh, since we already know what the defeat looks like, what about victory? Can Russia still win? And I think there are some sort of victory, a mix of three points. One of these points is already a victory, I think, for now, for Russia. But if all three can happen, that would be great. Uh, first is if Russia can finish this war, conclude this war quickly and uh, have a peace deal, a uh, false concession, that would be great because that means that the, uh, the drain on their economy can stop, that they can recuperate economically and they can rebuild their military. And then they can try something in the future. Secondly, if NATO somehow disintegrates, that would be even better because if they can take some part of Ukraine and then NATO disappears, then they will be able to project power from Ukraine, the eastern Ukraine to western Ukraine, then from western Ukraine into Europe. Then there is a hope that for the, for the Russians to finally have some sort of dominance. I don't mean that Russia for Russia to um, to occupy the entire uh, the European continent. They certainly lack the, the ability to do that, but they can project power far beyond their borders if NATO is not there. And uh, that would be a bigger victory. And thirdly, if, the, 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 if Russia can turn the West into its allies, it will no longer face international isolation, then it can uh, recuperate, rebuild much faster and... Uh, that's even better for Russia. But how can these be achieved? I think it's all but impossible. It's very, very, very difficult. There is one single slim chance that is for Trump to win, to retake power in the United States. But not only for Trump to win, but also for Trump to do something that is really contrary to, contrary to the interests of his country uh, that would really give credence to russia gate now russia gate i think probably is as people say a hoax but uh, people's hillary clinton and the democrats came up with a story uh, because you know uh, trump really likes russia more than most americans do and uh, uh, most american leaders and certainly more than all american elites do and that is uh, quite a strange thing right but if russia if he wins power and he takes uh, he pulls 
the, the United States out of NATO. He pressures Ukraine to uh, uh, to concede to cede land to Russia, and uh, then he can also try to ally with Russia against China. Then it would uh, Russia would have the tri trifecta, because by having uh, Trump force Ukraine to cede land. Russia will win point one. If Trump can also disintegrate uh, uh, NATO, Trump uh, Russia will have point two. And if uh, America can ally with Russia, then Tr uh, Russia uh, Russia will have point three. That will be superb. And currently, Russia is making a forceful push in mostly uh, around Pokrovsk, but also in Toresk. Uh, and they are doing this certainly with hope at great cost of casualties and uh, material, uh, personnel and material. Uh, obviously, they are doing this to take the entirety of Donbass uh, this, uh, this before this winter, so that they can be prepared. They will be in a position uh, to reach some sort of uh, a peace uh, or maybe armst armistice with Ukraine, if Trump can force Ukraine into talking with them. But if Trump it, we will not be in office, and I don't think Trump will be in office, and if Trump gets in office, but Trump cannot carry this, uh, push this through, because there is the deep state, there are all those interests, Trump uh, is, as people always say, Trump is just the president, will just be a president, will just be a single person against the whole machinery. Um, so it will be very difficult. But if they, if Trump really manages to do it, then the Russians could be in a good position. And that, I think, is the small chances that they are they're striving for. Uh, but as I have mentioned, uh, actually in this uh, in this article, uh, I don't think uh, Trump will win, and so this will all be for nothing. All right, thanks very much for listening, and uh, have a great day.